We're excited to have Dr. Walker with us again today for our Ask the Expert video blog series. Dr. Walker recently retired from Primary Children's Hospital and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. And joining me today are Jennifer Bashard Johnson with Dr. Walker. She is our education manager and myself, Amanda Garzon, director of marketing and communications. Dr. Walker also heads our medical advisory board. And so it's an honor to have him with us as we go through these different questions that our community has posed to us uh, to get advice on some really interesting topics. And today, Jen, this is a topic that we really see a lot on social media and that we get a lot of questions about. Yes. 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 So Tom asked us, can barometric pressure cause headaches and shunted people? I almost feel like, Jen, you could answer this question. Yes, I feel like a weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> so this weatherman syndrome, yes. Dr. Walker, is this a uh, common? It's very real and it's quite common. Most patients with shunts are weathermen. Um, yes, barometric pressure uh, can, you can, you can sense the change in barometric pressure. Uh, when you have a shunt. Not, not everybody does. Okay. But a lot of patients with a shunt are quite sensitive to changes in pressure. Um, um, where I work in Utah, if uh, a, a shunted patient goes camping and they go to nine or 10,000 feet, I would say the majority of them feel a little bit different. They usually get headachey. If they come down maybe a thousand feet, it's all, all better. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the rare case um, of a patient from Utah who goes to California Beach and they don't feel well there and they feel better when they're back in Utah. So some patients are quite sensitive. Um, the um, airplanes are pressurized to 8,000 feet most patients, in my experience, don't um, aren't bothered by that, but some are. They can feel the difference um, when they're at 8,000 feet in, in an airplane. So it's real. Uh, in some patients, it's very sensitive, and in some, they don't know it at all. So just what's going on inside the head? Like, why are some people sensitive and others not? What's ha what are the changes that are taking place inside the head that are causing the sensitivity? Well, that's, that's a lot of physiology <laughs> to explain. In two seconds. But, <laughs> but there, there's a constant pulsation with each beat of our heart. And there's a lot of fluid normally inside our cranium. The shunt's draining a lot of that fluid away, and we are not in the same balance as a more normal person might be. Mm -hmm. So that change in fluid dynamics in some people is enough to be really sensitive to small changes in, in pressure. So, Jen, when, when you say you're a weather woman, can you really tell when it's going to rain? Typically the day before. Really? Yeah. And did your parents believe you when you were younger and you would express kind of discomfort around pressure changes and then realize it was linked I to weather? I think so. Um, they may tell you different. <laughs> I think so. Because <laughs> I think what I'm hearing as the mother of a child with hydrocephalus yeah. is I should really listen to my kid. Mm -hmm. and, and when they are maybe more symptomatic or have a headache, not you know, blow it off. But is it dangerous, Dr. Walker? Is, it, is there a potential for shunt failure or is it just a sensitivity? I don't think it's dangerous in the majority of patients. I, I, patients, I, I'm not sure I remember someone blocking the shunt because of those changes in uh, barometric pressures, but it can be painful until they stabilize again. And I'm sure scary for parents um, or individuals who have hydrocephalus who are experiencing the pain or the discomfort to not understand what's happening and maybe think they're in shunt failure. For me personally, the symptoms are very similar to a shunt malfunction. Mm -hmm. um, so they're pressure headaches and sometimes even nausea. So, um, again, everybody's different, but those are my symptoms. And so it is, you really have to listen to your body and be in tune. And so if you are having those symptoms and you're in doubt, it is important to contact your doctor, but um, I definitely get them with the weather. 
And also it sounds like contact your doctor, but also understand your environment. Yes. Have you just traveled to a different elevation yes. or is the weather person saying it's going to rain tomorrow? Yes. Could also be <laughs> factors that are causing the discomfort in that moment. And even track your symptoms. Oh, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Do you have other uh, advice or suggestions to give to patients or parents um, for dealing with this type of issue or being vigilant around it? I don't know that you can change the fact that you're going to be exposed to changes in barometric pressure throughout mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. But uh, there, there are some patients who are so exquisitely sensitive that, that they're limited. For example, at one of the HA conferences mm -hmm. in Park City, Utah, uh, there was a young man that just could ta not tolerate the change in altitude and um, had to go home. Mm -hmm. He was from a, a lowland place and uh, he simply could not tolerate it. Um, I would think that's, that's rare, but uh, the point being that it is real and some patients are so sensitive that they might really be miserable if they are changing altitudes. I don't think you can do much about the approaching storm. Right. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I know, as I said, Jen and I see this question come mm -hmm. up a lot, uh, particularly in our parent community. And it's great to, to be able to actually get a, an answer on mm -hmm. this. And Tom, thank you for a really fantastic question. And we look forward to answering more questions down the road.